The goal of the lecture today is uh, somehow to illustrate that uh, the kind of thing we, we, we were discussing in the two in the in the in, in the seminar on character variety. Uh, usually we talked we talked about representation into uh, into a compact group or, or, or Lee group, etc. I want to, to, to illustrate by two topics that this is kind of a, a subject which is relevant also in discrete mathematics and uh, even in computational group theory, uh, even though it looks in the first sight as something which is quite far, but you will see that there is connection. Now, I, I don't claim that you can really use results from uh, the continuous to the discrete or vice versa at least, but at least it gives you some inspiration how to think about the problem. So uh, uh, Sam, I can write also on this vector of hand, but maybe I will leave it. So uh, there are two problems that I want to discuss in, discrete, in the discrete world. And one is really from computational group theory. And the story, and the story is, is, uh, is the following. In computational group theory in finite groups, People are interested in questions like that. You know, they are really doing work with computer. You, you are giving uh, two, two matrices, which are 100 by 100 over the, the field of order three. And you want to compute, say, the order of the group generated by them. Or what is the, the, comp the composition factors of the, group, uh, of the group generated by them. A basic subroutine in many of the algorithms to do this computational group theory is to generate a random element in the group generated by these two elements. So to have a random, like a pseudo-random that you can work with, because many of these algorithms are random algorithms. So of course, if, if I would tell you how to, uh, how to do it, everyone would tell, would tell me, take a random walk with the generators, and eventually you will get something which looks pretty random. The problem is that if these are not expanders, let's say the group generated by them is nilpotent or a billion, the worst, or, 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 or something, but it will take you a long time, a long time to get it uh, to get it done. You know, to get a random element. So uh, uh, something in the '90s, a few people suggested. Uh, now I forgot to write their name, and I I know very well one of them, Lydon Green, and now I don't remember who were the others. Okay, I find it <laughs> suggested the following algorithm, uh, which is called product replacement algorithm, which they say the following: instead of taking just the two elements, start you start with G1 and G2, look at G1, G2, and the identity, and, and a little bit more, like instead of two, take seven. And, uh, and then start to act uh, in the following way. Uh, if you are in x1 up to x7, then, then the, 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 the move, then choose ij randomly and multiply xi by either xi xj to the plus minus one, all the rest will be the same, or x, x, j, x, i, either from the right or from the left, randomly change one of the uh, entries of this vector. So this will be one move, and then do it many times. So it's like kind of elementary, uh, non-commutative elementary operation that you do in, uh, in linear algebra, and then do it many times, and then you get some vectors, and then you, you pick up, say, the first element of that vector or any element randomly and, and declare this to be your, your random element. This is called the product replacement algorithm. Now, in, uh, uh, and they, they propose this algorithm, and they checked it on the computer, and, and it, it has our, uh, our, uh, it was unbelievably a success. For example, uh, in the first paper, there is very little theory, uh, but they reported on, uh, on, on trial. What, what does it mean to make an experiment? They start like in the tau, in tau equal one, two, 
and sigma equal one to uh, people in the symmetric group. In the symmetric group, right? People love to do it. Uh, what's the number of card? Fifty-six. <laughs> Two. What? 52. 52. Plus he kept the jokers. 52. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in this business. So, <laughs> so, so, so if you look at this, uh, these two elements, these two, uh, uh, and you ask how much time it will take you by random work to get uh, a random element. So there is a theory, and the theory says something like n cube log n, I think. Like if this would this would be n. So to 52 is. Uh, is a, is a quite a large number, you know, not very large, but you know, it will be, I don't know, 50,000 or whatever. On the other hand, in this algorithm, it took them something like 160 steps to get a random. What does it mean? How, how do they know that something is random? They know to check, like a, a random element, a, a, there is a lot of theory how a random element of the symmetric group look like, how many uh, cycle it has, uh, various invariants which typical to random element. And, and they, by experiment, they saw that after something like 160 steps, you got, you got uh, something which looks like random. So, so now this area of computational group theory is like physics. You don't need proofs. If it works, it works. <laughs> And people are happy. And very quickly, this algorithm became the most popular algorithm. It was implemented. There are two big, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's called packages of programs in computation group theory. One called Magma, one called uh, Gap. And they are both, both. And this algorithm is implemented in both of them. And this became the standard way to get a random. <laughs> A random uh, element when you really do calculation, but the the question why this works uh, um, um, was a bit what 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 a, a bit dif a bit difficult to analyze. Uh, Diaconis and I think Ron Graham wrote a long paper when they proved that for nilpotent groups the mixing time of this algorithm the mixing time is kind of how much time it takes you to behave like random. Is, uh, is sub exponential, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this was one problem. I, I'll come back to that because I want now to talk another problem, and then I will to, I will talk about them together. And the, the, the other problem is is all there, and it really comes is somewhat in the sixties already. But there is actually incredible, still very very simple open problems about finite group. And this is a question: Let G be a group. Let's say a finite group. And we, we, uh, we all know what is the presentation of the group of uh, the group. A presentation for the group, say by generator S, and the relations R one. Maybe I'll write it like that: a X one to X T. These are generator and relations R1 up to Rk. Uh, so this means that we take, this means that we take the free group on X, right? And we divide it by the normal closure, which I like to write, uh, the, the a subgroup generated by something I will write with one brackets and the normal closure, the minimal normal subgroup generated by them, where these are i in the free group, so in the free group on degenerators in this fx, right? So this is a presentation. And now people study, okay, you start with a group, you write a presentation to what, but you can, you have many different presentations for the same group. And natural questions come up, for example, how, dear, how, really, how really different are they? For example, I can, let's say, uh, if you fix, you fix D, you can write a presentation of a group on D generator of this, the minimal number, but you can also use more than really needed. Let's say you fix D, so, so and then uh, a presentation is obtained by taking an epimorphism from pi, pi is epimorphism onto G with a kernel R, and you take set of normal generators for R. Let's say you take a minimal set of normal generators for R. Let's say uh, that um, we, we will denote D 
f of r is the number. So usually d of something is the number of generator. d f of r is the number of generators of r as a normal subgroup, as the f group, as a normal subgroup of f. So this is f, f d. And, and for example, here is a question. Clearly, I can get many different presentations with different kernel. Is the number of the minimal number of relation is constant, depending only on D and the group and not on R. This is not at all clear. Not only that it's not unclear, let me tell you, this is an open problem till today. It's not known if, if the number of generators for a group. The relations for the group is, is uniquely determined by the group or uh, and D, or it really depends on the actual homomorphism. The group is true. What? The group is true. The group is that it is true. It look. Uh, the op. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what I know. I know I'll, I'll, at the very end of the lecture, I will show that I know to prove that it's true in the pro finite category. And we don't know that if it's true in the discrete category. So in a way, we are again in local to global questions. So this, this, there are going to be connection with this talk to the 10 o'clock seminar as well as to the 11 o'clock seminar. <laughs> uh, both will be connected. So for example, this is an open problem. So for example, is the FR independent phi, namely dependent on G, dependent on D? Now, here is another question. What? Do you mean bounded from above by something independent? Or? No, no, as a number. Uh, 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 no, like bounded from above is always, because you know, this is a finite group on, uh, of some order. This is D. Even the number of generators of R is bounded, by, is equal, actually, as a generator. Not normal, there is the Nielsen Schreier formula, is something like the order of G times D minus 1 plus 1. So more or less D time this, the, 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 the whole issue is about as normal generator. Okay. Another question is, and so maybe let's stress it, is uh, F A, is D F, F D, R, I, I, I hope you understand me, uh, is the minimum over D is obtained when D equal to the number of generators of G. Even this is not known. Maybe I can use more generators for the group and get less relations. We don't know even to prove that, that this is impossible. You know, maybe there is, you, you, you see what I'm saying? Maybe uh, uh, the natural thing is to think that if you want economical presentation as small as possible, then use as, as small as possible generator. Maybe not. We don't know that. This is still an open problem. I, I, I'm getting confused. Maybe I'm being stupid, but so for one- well, Okay, my notation are not so good, but, but don't, read, don't read it. Let me, let me say. R is a normal subgroup of the figure. No, okay, no. Now R, R is moving. So this is like R, R D pi, R depending on D and depending on pi. You see, I, uh, my question is, think about the presentation of a group by generators and relations. I want the most the smallest possible presentation with the smallest number of relations. Is such a smallest possible presentation is obtained when, when I'm using the smallest possible number of generators? So even this is not clear. I don't I understand that. I think he's confused clear. about what? What? I think you're confused about one, not two, right? Yeah, I'm confused about one at the moment. Already. Ah, but one. So, so I mean, is, is the question like if you if you're given G and you're given D? I'm, I'm given G and I'm given D. There are many possible epimorphism by from here to here. Is are the the minimal number of, of which each one of them you can write presentation out of it by picking the generators and, mi and a minimal set of relations in R, whether this number, 
uh, it depended of depend only on G and D. So you've written it as DF of R, but I might have written DF of G. Is there some reason to present it? No, I I didn't understand what. I didn't understand the question. I mean, you're writing DF of R. DF of R is the number of generators of R as an F group. F group by conjugation. So then, for one, DF of R is the minimum numbers of generators of R as an F group. As as an F group, which means it's a normal subgroup in F. That sentence doesn't involve pi. No, oh, R involves pi. Of course, it's independent of pi. So yeah, okay, asking. okay. And the story of this. So, uh, k pi. Is d of k pi independent of pi? I go over all pi. Pi is any map from any epimorphism from f to g. I have kernel. What's the minimal number of, of generators? So, r as an f sub. Is it does it on pi or does does it only depend upon g on g question. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and now there, uh, maybe let me mention one more in, 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 there are several uh, another famous open problem is uh, it has a cute name the generation gap and uh, and it's the following uh, let's look because something uh, uh, what you can th think about in this situation when you have r f to G, you can then F acts on R by conjugation. But if you look at the commutator of R, then it's a characteristic subgroup. So it's invariant under this action. And R acts trivially by conjugation on the quotient. So this is really a G module, right? G act on it. F act on R, F act on that, so F act on uh, by conjugation on the quotient, but because R acts trivially, then G really acts. So this is a G module, or if you want, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a DG module. And, and then you can ask, uh, and now what is clear, let me still, uh, okay, I will, I will write here. Uh, 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 you can look at the number of generators of this, Let's call it R bar. This is called the relation module corresponding to pi to this presentation. And look at this at DG of R bar as a module. Okay, now it's easy to see that this is less or equal to DF of R. For this one, it's known that this is independent of pi. This is known. Maybe by the end of the lecture, I will give you, an, an, not the classical proof, I'll give you kind of my way of thinking about that. But it's not known if, if this if these are equal or not. I mean, of course, in many cases they're equal. Let's, let's say it right away, whether they always equal. And then this, is, this problem is called the generation gap. Uh, whether the, the number of generators of R as an F module is equal to the number of, of generators of R bar as a G C module. So some of there is, in a way, there is no reason in the world that it will happen, but we don't know to, to uh, we don't have good lower bound on number of relations. On the other hand, this the cohomological method to study this invariant on the left, on the left, uh, on the left side. Um, okay, after. Sorry, so? This DF of. Does one know if it is computer burner? This one? The, no, the, the, the difficult one. DF of Kerpai. Uh, no, no, the, the, in one. In one. Above. Can you decide? Can you calculate it in a given situation, in fact? Um, uh, what do you mean calculated here exactly? No, I'm not. Uh, is it really computable the precise proof given the given pi? I certainly not difficult to find a presentation how to prove that it's minimal. That's I don't know what I don't think I, I have to think about it. I don't think I know to do it. Probably if we could do it, it would be a key step to that. At least I never thought about it, but I, I'm not, I, I, 
some of my intuition suggests that if we would know to do that, then we could say something about that. So, okay, now what I want to do is to connect these two issues to our, to our seminar. Uh, you see, in our seminar, we study a lot the, the kind of homomorphisms from gamma to a group G. Now, the, the cases that we mainly study was gamma being pi one of the surface group, but also the free group on N generators. It was mentioned here and there, right? Um, but G was always uh, either a compact group or SL2C, or uh, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, um, in, the, in the lecture of chain, um, and Peter, it went down to SL2P, and that's which is closer in spirit to what, to what I'm doing. Now, uh, I, so today, maybe I will say a few words at the very end about this group, but I mainly will talk about this group, but my G will be a finite group all the time. I will stick to finite group. I made few remarks about, about the, other, the other type of groups. So, uh, so this is all the homomorphism from gamma to G. Of course, here you have to be a bit careful. If you take a free group on N generators, and if G says is a, is, a, is a compactly grouped, there are no epimorphism in, a, a, in the strict sense, but almost every a, a homomorphism is dense. So we can dense, we consider as as, as epimorphism, so, in, in a, so, in, so if, if we are interested on the dynamic of the action, which we, as we will do in a few minutes, we consider anyway epimorphism. So let's now today consider epimorphism for the for finite group. This is of course not the same. So we will consider the epimorphism from pi to g, which is exactly the story there, and just to be short, I will call it En of G. So this is all the epimorphism from Fn onto G. Now, here is, this, here is a trivial observation, but the, this trivial observation um, was made in a paper of uh, Igor Pak and Mind few, few years after this PRA uh, came to the game, and we just say, look, the, what, uh, 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 what, we, what you are doing the, there with the PRA, the set, what, what is the set we are working in? So E and G can be identified as the set of all X1 up to Xn, such that all the n tuple of generators, all the order n tuple of generators of G, right? Because every epimorphism, you, uh, let's say you fix a basis for Fn, and, and, um, and uh, epimorphism is just uh, singling out an order set of generators for the group G. Now, this product replacement algorithm, think of it as a graph, right? You think of it as a graph, I make uh, E and G into a graph, which is a, uh, I think for n of uh, uh, n choose two. For n choose two, so this is uh, what two n n minus one regular in the following way, right? You 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 start with x one, x n, and then you move to x one. Then you just change i to xi, xj plus minus one, or either from the right or, or, or from the left, right? So this gives it the structure of a graph on the set E and G, on the set of n tuple of generators. That's exactly what we are doing. But that's exactly, uh, uh, this is exactly the Schreier graph of old Fn, to be honest, old plus Fn. In the, in, the, in the full automorphism group of Fn, you have a subgroup of index two, which obtained as, as the pre-image of SLNZ, right? We have a map from old Fn onto GLNZ. If you pull up back SLNZ, 
you get an index two subgroup, which is generated by the so-called Nielsen automorphisms. Okay, and let me explain what Nielsen automorphisms. Now, what are the Nielsen automorphism of the free group? It's exactly what you see here. If you start, if I, I, I will even use the same letters. If X1 up to X10 is a basis for Fn, then, then there are Lij plus minus one and, and Rij, the left Nielsen automorphism and the right Nielsen automorphism, which acts like that, the xt is going to xt, t is not i, and xi goes the, uh, to xj either to the plus or minus xi. Okay. And, and similarly uh, from i. Now it's well known classical results over under years old now, by now, that they generate the, uh, the group. Now, the, uh, and now you can see, this is exactly the kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, operation that was mentioned in this, in this, in this seminar, because out Fn in acts, in fact, out Fn cross out G acts on E and G. So ENG, I want to think of it as a double, either as an N tuple of generators or as an epimorphism from FN to G. I'm going to identify these two sets. And it acts like that. If you take, say, alpha ear and beta ear and pi ear, so you, then, then, alpha, then pi goes to a first alpha or maybe alpha to the minus one, I think, I'm not sure, and then, and then pi and then beta. This is the action. Well, that's easy to see. Now, if a group, a finitely generated acting on a, on a finite set, the Schreier graph is simply the graph that the finite set are the vertices, and the, and the generators are the, uh, uh, define the, the corresponding elements, like a Kelly graph, but the, but the stabilizer is not necessarily normal, right? Now, in that paper with Igor Park, we prove a conditional result. Namely, what we prove that we prove that if the automorphism group of the free group has property T, Kashdan property T, then these graphs will be expanded. You see, I don't want to repeat it because I, I gave so many talks about that that I, if you don't know it, please come to me after that and I will show you. There is a beautiful, beautiful uh, proof going back to Margulis that if you have a group with, with property T and, uh, and then, then Schreier graph of it, Schreier, you don't need Cayley quotient, that's the same proof. Schreier graph of it are excellent, are expander, gives you a family of expander. If they give you a family of expanders, it gives you mixing time, which is, which is, log, which is, uh, which is linear. And now, I already at that time, when we wrote the paper 20 years ago, we managed to show that in the, in the examples that they studied, in the, in the case that studied by Diakonis and Ron Graham, they prove sub-exponential mixing time, we drop it to linear mixing time, because, because they used important and we could have some relative property T. But the, 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 the good news, which just came up last year, that, the, that our conjecture, it was not our conjecture. I mean, it was an open problem at that time whether the automorphism group of the free group as property T turns out to, to have an almost positive solution, almost in the following sense. It's clear that, that the automorphism group of F2 does not have property T because it is mapped onto GL2Z, so it's mapped onto uh, even uh, something which is almost a free group. In fact, when I was here with uh, Fritz Grunberg 15 years ago, we proved that out F3 is a subgroup of finest index which is mapped onto a free group. So this was a bad start for, for the conjecture that out F3 does not have property P. So, but it turns out that this was kind of a childhood disease. 
namely, it only a problem. It's interesting why. I mean, I can explain you the connection. It's not accidental somehow. Uh, we kind of prove uh, uh, an unexpected uh, homomorphism from old Fn to GLn minus one. You, you see, the expected one is to GLn, but there is one to GLn which you don't see uh, uh, right away. And that's why old F3 has a free quotient. But uh, I, everything virtual up to finite index. But, uh, uh, but recently it was proved that old Fn for n greater than 4 do have property T, do have property T, and therefore uh, what we proved at that time conditional is not unconditional, and there is a full explanation if you want to the to the outstanding performances of this product replacement algorithm. The N4 is okay. open. What? Four is open. Oh no, no, not, not anymore. Okay, that's that's really for the, so for for the last few months. Uh, what happened is, is there was an interesting story. I should give the credit to the people who did it. I mean, it's it's kind of based on a new criterion for property T of, of Java, and then. Uh, this criterion can be checked by a computer, but once you find it, you can prove it. You know, you have to find some generator subject. I don't go to that. That's it. It's very nice. And then Ojava and uh, Kalia Kinova prove it for old F5, just for old F5. And then uh, Koliabak and Kalia Kinova prove it for every n greater than equal five in the kind of induction starting with the n over five. But recently, somebody by the name Nietzsche did more extensive uh, computer uh, uh, checks, and he found also it's it's computer assisted, but it's computer assisted that you can after you find it, you I think. Yeah, you I think what you might point out is there's a condition to prove property T, which is a finite condition, which uh, that spectrum of certain. Right, it's a finite condition of spectrum. You have to find in the group algebra some operators. Uh, some um, which satisfy some condition. This was a Java. So in principle, you can start and, and look. Once you find, so it's not easy to find, but once you find them, you can check them by hands also. So so somebody uh, uh, by the signature checked also for all, for all the four. So therefore, uh, the, the, this explained product. But let's let's me now. But let me stress something. You see. So basically, this is exactly. If you if you now see what we are talking about, this is the the expander is the dynamic of the action of of, of old Fn on ELG, right? But as you vary over all G, I, uh, 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 independent of G. Now it's independent of G, like the mixing time, and that's why it's logarithmic. That's why this is a, this is a very good explanation for the outstanding performances of the product replacement algorithm. But I, 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 I cheated you on one point. You see, usually when we study, le, 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 those who are familiar with what happened here with the case of, uh, of uh, in the compact group, this this the analog question. So I think Goldman was the first one to prove it for uh, Billy C with us. Maybe can, uh, yeah. Is over there. So I think he proved it for the mapping class group acting on the representations of it's this. dangerous because sometimes the guy's got his head and off. You can discover it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, is there, is there, right? Uh, Bill, you were the one who proved, I think, that the action of the mapping class group on the on the representation to SU2 is ergodic, and then some of the other six. Who? Yeah, XIA. XIA. Probably also Doug Pickerel. Doug Pickerel, too. He's also here. Doug Pickerel and Eugene Seo did it in general. Uh -huh. okay. They did it for compact group. Right. So usually that's the, 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 this is the game. You say, first of all, you try to prove ergodic, which is in the discrete case would be transitivity. And then you prove a mixing, which is kind of a spectral gap. Right? Here I showed you spectral gap. But what about transitivity? The spectral gap, I was sitting a bit. These are expanders on every orbit. Every orbit is expander, which for us, that's okay, because we don't care if for this problem, we don't really need it to be, to be a, a expander 
on the full graph because eventually we want it, we, we are picking just one element out of them. And you can see that if you start, because uh, they have a wonderful intuition. They said, Ed, don't do it on the minimum. Do it a little bit more, then, uh, then you, you manage to get to every element. So that's, for this problem, it's not so crucial that we will come to expand on the full graph, the transitivity. But now this, but, but this is, uh, for this question, the transitivity is important. For this question, the dynamics is not important, like the expansion is not important, but the transitivity is important. So let me discuss, let me discuss now this problem. Of, uh, this is a really classical problem, it's unbelievable. They are open for more than 60 years, I think by now, with almost no problem. I will show you something which, which uh, I know to prove, but I, I, I needed this type of results and I couldn't prove it, so I managed to bypass them somehow and prove something which is locally these results and therefore blah, blah, blah. It was, was enough. Uh, so what, what, so for example, all this, uh, let, let, let's look first of all at the number, the question number one. Okay, question number one, that's in a way. So question number one, if, okay, so, so, uh, and you know, let me, let me, uh, no, okay, I will not, uh, um, if, so we look at, so G finite group, I do want to argue with you at one point. I wouldn't say ergodicity is transitivity since I've suffered through that. I would say ergodicity is that there's a giant component. Is what? There's a massive, there's a very big component that's in Okay. That's a better. Uh, 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 okay, that's a better, but, but then you are uh, no, no. making my life much easier. I don't want to, I mean, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> transitivity is. I, 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 okay, I, I, I'll say something about that. Okay. Uh, uh, G finite group, and then, um, then uh, so first of all, there is something uh, um, you can see easily that uh, E, E and G, I, I want to eliminate this story, E and G divided by the automorphism group of G, right? You remember I told you before, oh, I erased it, I guess, that we have, now we have action from both sides, right? Now, two epimorphism are equivalent under the action of OG, if and only if they have the same kernel. Right, you can, uh, you can, you can see. So sometimes people uh, prefer to talk either on this or to talk about this kernel. In the classical, they usually talk about this kernel. So this is the set of all R, normal in F, such that F over R is isomorphic to G. So sometimes is more convenient to talk about, about this set. So let's call this set uh, KN of G, say, the kernels of G. And the question is, uh, now, is out, and clearly out of N now, you said these two actions commute with each other, right? But they are on, on different sides. So if I divide from by OG, I still have this action. And then also it's clear directly, we don't have to say that. O of N acts on K and G. Right, this is clear. And is this action transitive? And the answer is no, in general. In fact, it was a B.H. Neumann in 30 something, I think, or, or, or already studied this problem and he proved, he proved, I think, that if N equal two and G equal A5, I think there are a, more than one orbit, maybe even much more, I don't remember. Nowadays it's known that there are many orbits for that, but uh, if, uh, if they can find a simple group, that's that's easy. So these are what they call T systems. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Amazingly, the orbit of this in the classical literature is called T system. 
I am not sure even why. It has nothing to do with property T. When we came to death <laughs> and we introduced this property T to the subject, we were a little bit embarrassed by the fact that the T system, the T things to, I mean, I, I'm not sure if this was called T just to say transitivity or maybe Tietze. In the old literature, some of the, of this automorphism that we call Nielsen, or, or not exactly Nielsen plus conjugation, were, are called Tietze, Tietze map. So I'm not sure what's the reason it's called T-system, right? So in the latter, so, so let me say it, but I will not use it because it just confuses us with Kashdam property. Yes, it's L equals two is a little strange phrase because to commute it of two. Right, 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 right. So the, the, the N equal two now we understand that that's, that's kind of the, commu the commutator is invariant, the conjugacy class of commutator and its inverse are invariant. And then it's pretty clear that not, in fact, a, a little results of a student of mine, Karyom, with an Shalev, they really check that and they prove that if you take final simple group, then the number of, uh, of uh, orbits will go to infinity with the group because the traces of generators can get arbitrary large and maybe they even have a little bit of quantitative estimates and all that. Right, that's a simple result. But here is maybe the most uh, frustrating conjecture in this uh, in this uh, lecture, uh, uh, which is open problem for 50, 60 years with very little progress. And this is an, a conjecture uh, which was asked, asked by Weigold. Um, assume G is simple, finite group. Simple and uh, of course, uh, I'm today only finite. Uh, then this action, uh, sorry, and n greater or equal three, then uh, this action is transitive. Okay. Now, this, the, the, the only substantial results of this direction is by Robert Gilman, who is in one of the universities around here. It was proved 50 years ago that this is true for P SL2 P, P prime. Even for power prime, this was a student of mine, Garion, who proved it to, P, to, to, to power prime, but with n greater or equal four. Now, Nikolov proved that if you take families of Lie type of bounded rank, it's true for n is at least something, uh, depending on the rank. And, and it was proved by Evans, I think, for the Suzuki groups. You see, somehow to prove such a result, it's really about a final simple group. So I'm glad that Tip is, uh, is with us in the but first row. When you first told me this, you said there's a connection with the Poincare conjecture. Was that not true? Uh, 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 there is some, I don't want to talk about it. The Pancrake index is, 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 a, is a, for, a group theoretical formulation of it. Uh, it's, 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 it can be put in this language, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, just that you will be happy. Pancrake conjecture turns out to be equivalent. This was big uh, discovery, maybe of, of Stalling uh, many years ago, which, you know, all the group theorists were very excited, me included. And then we just understood that group theory sometimes can be as difficult <laughs> as that. Well, I think it's the following. If you, uh, uh, you take a surface group, Tg, uh, pi one of G, there is a natural epimorphism to Fg, the free group on G cross the free group on G, right? Because uh, A1 up to Ag, uh, just to add the relation that all the Ai commute with all the Bi, right? And, and, and turns out the Poincare conjecture is equivalent to the statement that every epimorphism from pi one of SG to FG cross FG is equivalent by, by the automorphism, yeah. which is really by the mapping class group, right? The inner automorphism, you feel here, you see here that once I pass to KN, what is acting is really not out FN, but the inner, right? So this is the out FN, so the map, the, to say there that the, the action of the mapping class group is transitive is turns out to be as, uh, uh, and now I, I got back to that recently because suddenly I thought myself, oh my God, now that you know that the Poincare conjecture is true, there should be some non-trivial group theoretical applications. 
but up to now, except of this statement, I don't know uh, to get something interesting out of it, but I should really. Okay, but let me, uh, time is running. Let me, let me say something. I, uh, uh, I don't know how much time I will have. Uh, then let me say an open problem, which I, I, I try to popularize and I call it baby vibrant. Right, we are so frustrated that we cannot make progress on that. So let's call it baby vigiled. You see, if you are transitive, in particular, you are not allowed to have a fixed point in this action, right? So now, what does it mean a fixed point? Let's think about it. A fixed point means that there is a normal subgroup in F, the, the image is G, which is invariant under holotomorphism, which means that it is a characteristic subgroup of the free group. So the baby variable is prove that for n greater or equal three, Fn has no uh, uh, characteristic subgroup. R such that Fn over R is a finite simple group. And this is clearly a question about the finite simple group. So, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm unfortunately, when things start to be interesting, I'm leaving tonight, <laughs> but I, I made an appointment with T and chain at 12, if somebody wants to say, I will say a little bit more about that, what I know at 12, but instead of the what, but uh, just for half an hour, we'll discuss it a bit. Uh, it's a fascinating problem because everyone who look at that, say, of course not, how can it be? So first of all, two warnings. One, it was expected, and that it's not in, in F2, there are. And up to recently, uh, uh, I mean, I was sure that that's a sort of but uh, I, I talked with, uh, with uh, Will Che, and he is very clever, and he, and he went to the computer and he checked, and they found there is. And we are now, uh, we are also understand a conceptual, uh, probably explanation. I just give an hint, which is beautiful, because it's related to the fact that out of two, is commensurable, is almost the same, or very related to the, to the break group on four strands. The break group has a, some representation, the Brouhaha representation, which is not faithful, but still it helps to get such caution. I just mentioned another conjecture, and they are not equivalent, at least I don't know to prove that they're equivalent, but some of them are related, and I, I, I don't have time to explain. It's known that old Fn is not linear. This is known. But there is a stronger conjecture that if all, uh, uh, you have any finite dimensional representations of old Fn, then rho of the inner automorphism of Fn is a, a solvable by finite. It's virtually solvable. This is an open problem. Now, because of the Bourrois representation of the brain group, somehow you see that it's not true for n equal to, and somehow you cook. Bourrois, uh, you mean b rho? Uh, I don't know. b rho. Oh, Bourrois, sorry. Bourrois <laughs> representation. And, I mean, nowadays it's known that they even have a faithful, but we don't need a defensive faithful, though uh, maybe a defensive faithful will give even more. So probably there are even infinitely many for n. <laughs> okay, let me say something about, about this. Uh, a story from a different direction because uh, again I want to stress that if you if G is compact, then the automorphism group of the free group, compact connected compact free group, acts ergodically in all cases, and this is a result of Sahi Kilander. Uh, I just I don't want to uh, yeah let me let me see what else I wanted to say. Okay. Ah, and another warning regarding this, uh, and we, that's really surprised me to regarding the baby Weigold. Uh, it turns out that the surface group, 
do have normal subgroup with uh, a finite simple quotients. Yeah, this is surprising, right? I mean, the feeling is that it mixes a lot. Wait, wait, wait. by surface, you mean the mapping? Uh, 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 <laughs> I mean, uh, this, is, this is a very elementary statement about the surface group, the pi one of SG, the group with A1 up to AG, B1 up to BG, the commutator of, uh, of them is, is one, as a normal, as infinitely many even, normal subgroups of finite index, a, a, a characteristic subgroup of finite index that the quotients are simple. And how these are cooked out, because this, because the mapping class group, or, if, or better the automorphism group or the surface group, as non-trivial representation, or, uh, uh, which <laughs> violating this second conjecture. They have this representation uh, coming, uh, to be honest, I don't understand them, from quantum, uh, yeah, what, like written type of representations of the mapping class group. And some of from them you can, you, can, uh, you can milk out uh, in a way which I don't want to extend. Okay. It. What's the status of whether those are unitizable? You know? No, uh, we don't need it. Yeah, I know. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's relevant in order for yeah. the property. Property T, by the way, to the mapping class group is still open. I mean, it was declared uh, not having property T some years ago, but I think uh, no proof was provided, and that's maybe the reason. I still want to do one thing. I have a few minutes, but there is something so beautiful that I even want to give a proof. I want to show you. The way we were for n equal to two is wrong. What? This way we were for n equal to two wrong. Uh, which conjecture are you talking about? Baby Weigold. For Baby Weigold? For n equal to two. Is it wrong? No, no, it's wrong. God. So now, now I was, I thought it's wrong, but now uh, <laughs> we have checked it on a computer. It's wrong. <laughs> it's, I never uh, bothered to, to write it. Well, somehow it, it looks to me like it should be wrong. I was not sure about something. We are talking about that in the last few days. So can you say what, uh, is, what is the simple quotient? What? What is even quotient that that gives you the So what is S U uh, P S U four and five? P S U four and five. Four and five. This uh, uh, and what is Q? Sixteen. Uh, what you check really? Sixteen and twenty five. What? Sixteen and twenty five. Sixteen and twenty five. Wait, sorry, sorry. P S U three on 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 uh, sixteen and twenty five. P S U three. So, so there's like a sub quotient of GLF, yeah, GL3F16. We probably will have very soon a, a clear conceptual explanation and even infinitely many. I, 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 I don't want to go there because, first of all, it's not completely ready. And second, there's something so beautiful that I want to show you. And, uh, and, uh, and then I will, I, and let me say first because I'm afraid that otherwise I will not. Have, I want to prove you something which called the Gashit's Lemma, which is not as known as it should be. And um, I, I, I want to give a proof in the five minutes that I have, and then I will tell you very, very quickly why this is related to us. Let's say if a uh, pi from G, from any G onto H epimorphism, both are finite. Now this is not true for infinite groups. Even if H is, Finite and G is not finite, it's not true what I'm going to say. Assume D of G is at most D, like the number of genders D is at most G. Then for every, say, Z1, every maybe Y1 up to Yd, not with Y, but in E D H, so I take a D tuple of generator for H can be lifted to X, X1, XD in, in, uh, in E D, in E D of G. And you understand such a pi of x bar is equal to y bar. You understand what I mean? You can lift it to a set of generators for, for G. Let me give you a, a, a beautiful proof. That's not the original proof of Gashit, but it's a proof due to Roquette. And it says the following. 
Note first that if let, I don't know, B be a subgroup of G and define the following, define the following eta B of Z. I'm defining a, a function on uh, a function on E D of H. Okay. Uh, this will be the number of uh, what I will call it, I don't know, U, U bar in E D of B so that pi of U bar is equal to Z bar. I mean, it's very simple. It works. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I'm asking myself how I, I, I define a function for every B, it's a different function. And uh, if eta B of B tuple of generators for H, right, for H, is in how many ways you can lift it to generators for B. For example, if pi of B is strictly less than H, then this eta is always zero, right? And I cannot lift them to generators for B, right? But now the important claim is The important thing is that eta b of z is constant. Constant function on z. So if b is not onto, it's zero. Okay, so it's constant. Is independent of Z. Let's assume that, so assume pi of B is equal to H, otherwise we finish, right? Then, uh, then how, in, how, how many of, and how many of, this, of, of these tuples can be lift back to B? So, so let's say that this is B with kernel L. Right, so the kernel mean, I mean that the kernel of pi restricted to B is L. So L is the normal subgroup of B, that the quotient is H. So the total number, so N, I claim that N B of Z is equal to, what is the total number of lifting is L times D, right? I can, then I can, every, every little Z, I can lift back in, in a, in L form, minus sigma over all B1 strictly less than B of eta B1 of Z, right? By, by induction hypothesis, all these are constant functions independent of Z. And therefore, this one is also constant. Aha, okay, so this is the proof of the claim. Now, if this is the proof of the claim, to prove that, to prove the theorem, the lemma, where's the lemma? To prove the lemma that there exists such a lifting, I have to prove that, that it's not zero. How do I know that it's not zero? Aha, I assume that the number of generators of G is D, right? Without this, it won't work. Which means I can start with D generator of G, I can lift them, I can throw them down and lift them back. Right. So there exists one D tuple for which it's not zero, and therefore it's not zero for every D tuple. I, 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 I think it's a very clever proof. It's a great proof. Anyway, why this proof is, is so important? For, why this results is so important for us? Because these results, now let me show you. Uh, if something like that is true for, if something like that is true for finite, then by standard inverse limit argument, it's true also for profinite groups. And now I claim that the application, that the action, if you look, so I will, I will not bother to explain exactly what is the profinite completion. That's kind of the free profinite group. You can think about it as in two different ways, either as the 
a profile completion of the free group on n generators, or as, as the universal object on n generators in the category profile and group. Anyway, a, a, a e n of g of, of g is the same as the epimorphism. It's the same set really because every epimorphism from G to, to from, from Fn to G can be extended uniquely to the profile and completion and vice versa. So this acts transitively on En of G for every N, even N equal to and for every G. Okay, because I don't have time because it's it, it, it's it's an easy application of that. But now this this enables you to solve all these problems in the category of profile and group because if they all are the same, then the number of generators as a profile and groups are the same, and they, and you can even solve this one. This needs a little bit more work to show that indeed the minimal presentation, the profile category will be obtained with the minimal number of generators. And you can prove this one if you look at it as a Z hat module. There are even all of them are isomorphic and there is a quality between the number. Now, there is, this is another result of mine, that there is an equality between the number of generators of, of, uh, of the profile completion at the number of relation in the profile category and the number of generators of the relation module in the discrete category. Now, this gives a new form to the classical problem. The, the classical problem, the gap generation problem, um, which was the question whether for a finite group, the number of relations for the group and to the relation modules are the same. And, and now you can think about it in a different way. Usually, if you take a presentation of a finite group in the discrete category, it also serves as a presentation on the profinite category. But maybe we can do better in the profinite category. We, there is no single example that we know that we can do it. And I, but what I'm telling you now that it's exactly this question is exactly equivalent to the generation gap problem. It's really equivalent. Still, why, why I bother to develop all this theory? Because there were, there were problems which seems to be completely unrelated to poor finite groups and all, and all what discussed about counting finite groups. There was a conjecture of a man in Piber, how many groups are there of n, of n element generated by d element? And they, uh, the conjecture was that it's n to the d log n. Anyway, I was interested in these type of questions. And uh, it was boiled down to study presentations of these finite groups and finite simple groups and to prove that the, the finite simple group has small presentations. And this was an open problem. But what I noticed that if they have a small profile presentation, then, then all these reduction are still working and you can, uh, you can deduce small profile presentation because the relation, because the profile presentation are the same as relation module and relation module can be handled using cohomology and the cohomology can be uh, evaluated. There is machinery to evaluate it. Okay, I don't have time for that. I, the only goal I wanted to tell you that the theory that we are developing here mainly for compact group and, and Lie groups is, is interesting aspect also in the discrete world. And sometimes I, 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 I don't have any application from one side to another, but I, it clearly uh, is some inspiration, I think, from both sides, from one side to, to another. Okay, and I'm already late. So we'll take, uh, thank you very much. We'll take three, four minutes uh, uh, that, and Chen Meiri with us. Chen Meiri will start this talk. He wanted to talk only for four. No, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's there. Okay, Chen. Right, let's just thank yeah. everyone.